Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's Wednesday, October 28th. There is a new poll out that suggests that Texas is the second most hated state in the nation. Ouch, I know, yeah. but we're not number one. <laughs> we're not number one. No, no that, that's New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations, Jersey. Uh, <laughs> number three is, is California. <laughs> number three, California. Uh, the lifestyle website Best Life must be looking for a fight after naming us as one of the most hated states. We came in number two behind Jersey, and they're very, what they admitted is a very unscientific poll. So the recent talker poll published by the website was apparently based on analysis of people who have recently moved out of each state, a Gallup poll of which citizens felt the most pride in their home states and an Instagram poll. See, that's where it went very mm -hmm. unscientific. They're like, well, we're taking a little bit of this poll and then mm -hmm. this poll, and then we're gonna roll in an Instagram poll. Yay! <laughs> well, the Gallup poll actually found that 68% of Texans said Texas was the best possible state to live in, and Texas outranked all the others when it comes to a percentage of residents who rate it as the single best place mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. Uh, so 2018 Sisters reported that Lone Star State had the largest overall growth since 2017 with an increase of more than 379,000 people. All right, so two other notes. Who do we hate, according to this graph on this story, KSAT.com? Texas hates Oklahoma. Steph, you want to jump in here? <laughs> Because you mean, went to UT. Right. As a UT fan, I can see how... You don't hate um, the whole state. Uh, right. Just OU. Just OU. <laughs> so we we did a follow-up story mm -hmm. also on KSET.com. What do Texans think that this poll suggested that we're the second most hated state? Some of the replies are kind of funny, especially this first one from mm -hmm. at Hunter Martinez. Envy, table for 49. <laughs> Uh, the poll and the, yeah, the poll didn't sit too well with Texas natives who started sharing their opinion shortly after it made headlines. Uh, somebody else wrote, "Bye." There's a reason. There's a bumper sticker that says, "I wasn't born in Texas. I got here as fast as I could." And finally, at Jen and Bella 17 wrote uh, on Twitter, "I smell jealousy." Yes. Where was that one quote? Oh, oh yeah. From where we're sitting, this seems to be a case of they hate us because they ain't us. They hate us because they ain't us. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Yeah. I don't mind. Okay. We're, we're glad to be in Texas. <laughs> For now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. Just three weeks after Hurricane Delta made landfall, people along the Gulf Coast are preparing for yet another storm. Hurricane Zeta is expected to hit this evening as a Category 1 storm. The CEOs of Facebook, Twitter, and Google are set to testify in front of a Senate committee today. They will discuss how the platforms decide what content is allowed and answer questions over the moderation of prominent conservative posts, including President Trump. President Donald Trump's campaign website was hit by hackers. The campaign says it's working with law enforcement to investigate the source of the attack. The website is now back up and running. A judge has ordered Immigration and Customs Enforcement to release more than 250 detainees from its center at Adelanto, California, amid a coronavirus outbreak. As of yesterday, 238 people at the center had contracted the virus. The founder of an alleged sex cult will spend the rest of his life in prison. Keith Raniere was sentenced to 120 years behind bars on Tuesday for sex trafficking, racketeering, and conspiracy. With just six days left until Election Day, more than 68 million Americans have already voted. That's half of all ballots cast during the 2016 presidential election. The youth vote in Texas is up by more than 600 percent from the last presidential election. Data shows more than 750,000 people under 30 have cast their ballots this year, compared to just 160,000 in 2016. The Los Angeles Dodgers are World Series champions for the first time in 32 years. They beat the Tampa Bay Rays last night in Game 6. Jon Stewart is returning to the spotlight. The former host of The Daily Show is getting a new series on Apple TV Plus to discuss current affairs. And that's today's 9 at 9. 
Well, our work day is almost half over, but when we came in this morning, it was windy, it was wet, and it was so cold. It was cold. so cold, I know, but I feel bad. Like, I feel like I shouldn't say anything about it because I've been asking for the cold weather. Well, me too, <laughs> but it, here's the change. Just it seems like in a matter of minutes, the sun has started to pop out. Mm -hmm. Those clouds nice. going away, the sun is out, temperatures are going to warm up. But let's look at the current wind chills right now. 35 is what it feels like here in San Antonio. 37 in New Braunfels, 33 in the Valley. It feels like 34 right now in Seguin. Good northwesterly wind. That's still creating those wind chills. But with the sun, we think temperatures will make it into the 60s later today. Let's look at the cloud cover. Actually, the current temperature is 42 at the airport. That's what uh, is helping to create that wind chill. Again, northwesterly winds and these chilly numbers. 36 Bernie Stage, 37 Comfort, 39 right now in Tarpley. There's a look at the cloud cover. I know it's kind of hard to see, but... Uh, we've got some breaks moving in around Bear County and then the, the actual clearing line still back out there around Hondo. Once that moves through, though, we'll see sun for the rest of today and really for the next four or five days. Uh, rainfall is moving away. Yeah, you can see some of that still across our eastern counties. That is not our forecast for today, but we'll be up around uh, 62 with uh, or 65, I should say, with uh, mostly sunny skies to sunny skies later this afternoon. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Quick look at Transky. There's 410 at Cherry Ridge, and they've been uh, cleaning up that big rig accident that's not on the main lane, so it's over that uh, ramp right there, the overpass. 1604, by the way, Green Mountain Road still closed due to a very early morning accident they've been working on for many, many hours, but a complete closure of 1604, far northeast side at Green Mountain Road. We are still waiting to learn more information about a major accident on the far northeast side that caused some trouble for drivers this morning. Now, police tell us officers had to close all the lanes of Loop 1604 at Green Mountain Road due to an 18 wheeler accident. Yeah, so this is the one we were just chatting about with Transguide up. It happened around 430 and the highway, as we said, is still closed. Police say drivers should find an alternate route. Investigators are still not sure what caused that incident. And top stories we are following today. San Antonio police are investigating a couple of overnight shootings around town. First one happened at a northeast side apartment complex in the 3200 block of Cripple Creek. Police say around 1130 last night someone knocked on a man's door. Once inside, investigators say something happened and the man was shot in the leg. Officers tell us the victim was taken to the hospital, but his condition is not known. Right now, police are still looking for that shooter. Second shooting happened on the west side, the 4400 block of Tranquil Creek, not far from Grissom and Loop 410. Police tell us around 1030 last night, a man and a woman were arguing when the man pulled out a gun and shot the woman in the knee. Now, that man has been identified as 40-year-old Chad Rutzel. The woman is taken to University Hospital and is expected to recover. Police say Rutzel is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. San Antonio arson investigators are working to determine the cause of a fire at an abandoned Sonic restaurant. That was a story we were covering on the early edition of GMSA. Nearly a dozen fire units on scene battling in the flames around 3.30 this morning. This is in the 4500 block of Ritterman, not far from Loop 410 on the northeast side. Firefighters telling us witness saw the flames and called for help. Crews say they saw the flames inside the building when they got there, but they were able to put the fire out quickly. Luckily, there were no injuries. In your other morning headlines, we have body cam footage released showing a shooting from a month ago in California, and a man disappears walking down a sidewalk. We'll show you how dangerous it is for road construction and a life-size Pac-Man game. Our David Sears is here. Morning, Dave. You guys ever play Pac-Man? Of course, yeah. I was the master. She's the champ. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's the champ? Yeah, mm -hmm. she is. We'll see how she handles this one coming up. All right, first, we're going to start with another officer involved shooting Californian police following, allowing the public to view it by releasing body cam footage. Now, officers were responding to a call for a suspect who had stabbed his mother several times. When they confronted the man, 27 year old Jose Marcus Ramirez, he took off running down the street with knife in hand. Officers pursued him. Officers tried to hit him with non-lethal foam bullets, but it didn't have any effect on it. Actually, tried twice. Then Ramirez started walking towards him, yelling at the officers to shoot him. They did. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. According to the victim's sister, he suffered from schizophrenia, but never had a violent past, and things should have turned out different, according to her. One shot to the leg or one shot to the hand or the shoulder is enough to disarm someone. No one's going to survive four shots to an abdomen. All three officers involved now on modified duty as the department determines whether the shooting was within department policy. All right, so you're just walking down the street, minding your own business, and then this happens. Watch this guy right here 
We're going to zoom in on him and watch. Now you see him? Now you don't. Gone. Fell right into a hole in the sidewalk on a street in New York City. He was headed to the bus stop when the freak accident occurred. You can see several people rushed to his aid. The guy went about 12 to 15 feet down in that hole. Firefighters got there. It took about a half hour to get him out of that hole and get him to the hospital. But listen to his brother talk about the scariest part for the guy while he was waiting for help. Remember, we are in New York City. Rats crawling on him. He can't move. He's just, he didn't want to yell. It was so bad. He, he didn't want to yell because he was afraid it was going to be rats that, you know, went inside his mouth and stuff. So he was just there. His biggest fear, rats crawling on him and getting him in the mouth if he yelled. Oh. <laughs> well, you said it's New York. Creepy in itself. Uh. Hey, the sidewalk was over an old cellar connected to that building right next to it. So now inspectors are looking into the situation. The owner of the building is actually responsible for the sidewalk upkeep. A citation issued a couple of years ago to the building's owner for a sidewalk violation. Yeah, I guess so. All right, maybe hard to see, but check out the road construction worker. Got drilled right there, ends up on the hood of that car, and the driver just keeps going. This happened in, in New York. This is an apartment of transportation worker who was trying to stop traffic. The driver of that red car just didn't need to stop, apparently, and nailed that worker, put him on his hood, took off with the driver on that hood. Police officer down the road got him to stop. The worker had minor injuries. When you see him get off right there, you can see him kind of limping around. No word on what happened to the driver as far as charges go. And finally this morning, you are looking at one of the biggest Pac-Man games in the entire world. This is a real-life Pac-Man game board being built by a Caterpillar Construction Equipment Company to the company's headquarters in Peoria, Illinois. The maze is 200 feet by 200 feet. They did it to celebrate the company's 95th anniversary and the game's 40th anniversary. They used different pieces of equipment to build it, then put some big banners down, and then game on. They actually hooked up remote controls to different pieces of equipment and the workers, there's a banner here, we'll show you in just a second, you'll see the uh, workers. All these, all these things are operated by remote control now. See, that guy's got that big, huge remote control operating those things. Look out! That's some oh expensive equipment to damage if you mess it up really trying to eat the things. So. That's true. Remote if you take a wrong turn, forget about it. They were, they were calling this gargantuan, gargantuan gaming goodness. Appropriate. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Wasn't my game. Was this your game? <laughs> No, I didn't. I didn't. No? It was mine, yeah. but, but, this one, but this one looks more difficult. He had a case for asteroids. Uh, you, That's what he said. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, I was good at Pong, so go even further back. <laughs> Atari Pong, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, was it, it a was. Commodore or uh, both? It was like Commodore or Atari? I don't know, we, but we're really dating ourselves here, aren't we? That was just a little bar on the end and then the boop, boop. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right now, 910, 42 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Two homeowners in Wisconsin put a big Halloween display every year, but this year they decided to honor the 80s icons known for their unique ghost removal service. A look into their Ghostbusters themed haunted house display, still ahead. For the past 13 years, 96.1 radio host Russell Rush has been traveling the state, visiting some haunted places, shares his personal encounters with the spirit world later in the newscast. Calaveras, skeletons, and bones are cultural symbols of Day of the Dead, but nowhere do you see the dead portrayed more distinctly than at the Museum of the Mummies. After the break, E.C.'s Romero takes us inside. And walking out here for the newscast, I heard the market was down in a big way, and it is plummeting over 600 points at 26,855. <clears throat> and we have some late breaking news out of the northwest side this morning. Police are at the scene of a shooting in the 3700 block of Medical Drive. All right, you're looking live at the scene right now. Multiple officers on scene. We don't have much information. We do obviously have a crew there right now. We're going to bring you more information as this becomes available. But again, a developing law enforcement situation. 3700 block of Medical, not too far from the Medical Center. Keep it right here on KSAT and KSAT.com. And over the course of the last several weeks, we have brought you stories about the culture and traditions of Day of the Dead. And this morning, we have a closer look at the dead, literally. Literally. Mm -hmm. E.C. Romero takes us inside Mexico's Museum of the Mummies, where we learn about history and significance. And we do want to warn some of our viewers, you may find some of the images you're about to see disturbing. 
All across the country of Mexico, you will see them. Calaveras, skeletons and bones, cultural symbols of Mexico's iconic holiday, Day of the Dead. But nowhere do you see the dead portrayed more distinctly than at the Museum of the Mummies in Guanajuato, Mexico. Las uñas bastante grandes como conservadas. Uñas. The history of these mummified bodies begins over a hundred years ago, when a local tax was imposed on families to keep their loved ones interred. If families couldn't pay, their loved one was removed from their final resting place, resulting in the discovery of these naturally mummified bodies, a process brought on by the climate of Guanajuato. Mucha gente dice que son la tierra. No la tierra, son las criptas, gavetas donde son sepultados. Today, the museum is now one of the city's most popular tourist attractions. Our guide tells us some visitors are scared and others find the displays offensive. But for Mexico, it's part of the culture of not fearing death and a part of history. El proceso que es natural, y que es natural y que es un fenómeno que se da muy famoso en Guanajuato. Pues más que todo por la conservación que viene siendo cuerpos que nos reclamaron que, y, y que lo siguen se pondrán sacando, se siguen conservando. En Guanajuato, México, Isis Romero, KSAT 12 News. And don't forget to tune in on Friday at 8 p.m. for an illuminated virtual day of the Dead Parade. It will feature local dance performances and 20 vibrant themed barges. barges. Catch the two-hour parade right here on KSAT, KSAT.com, and streaming on our KSAT TV app. And it should be fairly cool on that day. Yes. That's right. Uh, Justin's yep. here, and it's time to talk junior meteorologists. I mean, it's Wednesday, after all. It is Wednesday. We got, we got a junior meteorologist this morning. This is Ole Tickles. Good morning, San Antonio. My name is Oli, and as you know, the cold weather arrived yesterday, and today is going to be very chilly. So if you want to go outside, bring your sweater, and don't forget to wear your mask. And so, and the week is going to be very cold. So, and the weekend for Halloween is going to be a very good day. Special shout out to my family, my grandparents in South Dakota, and my teachers in Meadow Village. Back to you, Justin. Oh my goodness, how That's nice quality. he remembered everybody. Yeah, he Expert did. at the toss. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you, Justin. Some shout outs. You got it all in there. The mask, it was great. Yes. We appreciate it. Thank you. Complete so much. package. Awesome That's right. job. We've got one more coming up uh, on Friday, Junior Meteorologist. Okay. Let's jump into the forecast now and talk about yesterday's records. It was the coldest daytime October high we've seen since 1925. We didn't get out of the 40s yesterday, so it was a record setting day. Very chilly this morning, not a record this morning, but cold nonetheless with some gusty winds and wind chills in the 30s. Right now we're still at 42 degrees, 37 Comfort, 37 in Kerrville. It will warm up today. We're going to get sun. The sun's already out. And this will push those temperatures eventually up into the 60s. But if you're heading outside right now, it's still jacket weather for sure. 44 New Braunfels, 43 Gonzales, 46 in Catula. And there's a look at the wind chills still in the 20s for Kerrville and Fredericksburg. We've got a wind chill of 35 here in San Antonio. That's what it feels like right now with a gusty northwesterly wind still gusting up to around 20 miles per hour. Those winds were howling overnight. They've let up a little bit, but it's still going to be a breezy day. 29, the current wind gust in Rock Springs and gusting to 30 in Del Rio at this hour. We think the winds will stay pretty steady today, maybe dropping off a little bit tonight into the 5 to 15 mile per hour range. But as we get into tomorrow, and that should say Thursday, we're going to see those wind gusts pick up again. We could see some gusts up around 30 miles per hour coming up tomorrow. So the, the winds uh, are going to stay breezy at least through tomorrow afternoon. Temperature wise today, 61 degrees, 2 o'clock, up around 65 by 5 o'clock. Northwesterly winds, as we mentioned, 10 to 20 miles per hour. There's the scene outside. We are already seeing some sun, and temperatures now at 42 degrees. Northwesterly winds at 13. And uh, there's a look at the water vapor. It shows you what we're dealing with here. Big upper level low. That's swinging through Texas. That's what created the rain, but we're starting to get the dry air moving in now as this uh, moves east. 
can also see uh, Zeta there, Hurricane Zeta, which is picking up steam. It's getting picked up by this storm system, and they'll both race off to the north and east. Rain out ahead of this, Dallas, Oklahoma City, still a little bit of wintry weather up there in parts of Oklahoma, and some snow on the back side of it in the Texas Panhandle. But there is that clearing that is going on, and that's what will be affecting us today as that clearing line is already moving through Hondo, should be through San Antonio by the lunch hour, and then we're sunny throughout the rest of the afternoon. There is Zeta, a good looking hurricane here, and it is racing north right now. Winds are at a 90 miles per hour gusting 105, but it's moving north at 17. And the latest track takes it towards New Orleans, potentially as a category two hurricane. And it winds at 100 miles per hour. This will be a little bit later this afternoon. Landfall is probably going to be late afternoon, early evening. And this could do some damage, not only winds, but storm surge. We're dealing with that again and some heavy rain. Uh, thankfully, it's moving fast enough where flooding is not going to be a big problem, but that storm surge certainly will be. And then uh, it moves out to the north and east pretty quickly as it gets picked up by that system. Real quick, let's give you a Halloween sneak peek. What are we expecting? Temperatures will be in the 60s, we think, once trick-or-treating gets underway. Clear and cool, low humidity. It's going to be an awesome Halloween, awesome weekend uh, with temperatures in the 70s. 74 Saturday, 75 on Sunday. And uh, overnight lows moderate a little bit too, back into the 50s by Sunday morning. Great looking seven day forecast there, guys. Who does it better on your Halloween graphic, dance wise? Mm, I'm going to go with the, mum, the mummy. mummy on the that mummy's one. pretty yeah. good. But I noticed you conveniently <laughs> were out of the picture once the dancing graphics Listen, came on. Listen, I've done that dance before. I I'm sure there's some archive footage, but it just wasn't feeling it today, you know? Yeah, it's too cold. Or maybe you right. felt it for days as, as you're aging. <laughs> that too. Or something else. The knees. Just kidding, Justin. No. Uh, 922, 42 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a California couple put on their hard hats and built a haunted house that's bringing one of Hollywood's biggest monsters to life. What makes its display so unique? Next. 925, a couple in Fresno, California, sharing their love of Halloween with their whole neighborhood. They built a haunted house that's bringing one of Hollywood's biggest monsters to life. Ben and Emily R. put a creepy Michael Myers drive through display together. The house plays out classic scenes from the 1978 horror film Halloween and has some spooky tunes and flashing lights. The couple says celebrating Halloween's always been a passion of theirs. They say they started working on the display way back in February. It was supposed to be a walkthrough, but they had to change it due to the whole pandemic thing. Yeah. And who are you going to call? Well, we Ghostbusters. Know. We, know. We, know. <laughs> we know the answer. And apparently they live in Wisconsin at a house in Milwaukee. The owners, Aaron and Jamie, do a big Halloween display every year. And this year they decided to honor the 80s icons known for taking down demons and annihilating apparitions. The Ghostbusters Firehouse is there, plus slime coming out of a hot dog cart in the famous Proton Pack battle. They love it, especially all the 80s kids, you know, who have all like young four and five year olds of their own. They love it. And most parents that are bringing their kids have made them watch the movie. Sounds fun. And this isn't just any old house decorated for the holiday. It's known in the neighborhood as A and J's Halloween House. They've been doing elaborate displays for about 17 years now, using the last few years to raise money for an organization that helps kids in crisis called Pathfinders Milwaukee. About five years ago, I was with a buddy of mine who lives in lower Manhattan walking around and I was like, that firehouse looks a lot like the one in Ghostbusters. Ah. And he said that's because it is dummy. <laughs> It's the exact one. <laughs> well, at least you could see it spot on. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. 927, 42 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. And it's that time of year where people love to share their ghost stories, and a local radio host is known for having a lot of them. Still ahead, 96.1, Russell Rush shares his experiences with us. And a Halloween party would not be complete without a fog machine and maybe glow in the dark earrings. Katie Blake shows us how to make our own in this week's Katie Science, not the earrings, the the fog machine. <laughs> we look forward to that too. Yeah. And it's a series that highlights some of the most extraordinary people in our area. Our Japanese Gray is here to break down some of her favorite stories from What's Up South Texas. That's next. And welcome back. It's 931. For over two years now, our Japanese Gray has been telling the stories of exceptional people in the area in a series she created titled What's Up South Texas. Now, you may have seen some of her stories right here on GMSA and GMSA at 9. Japanese joined us live in the studio to recap stories 
from this month. Daphne, good to see you here this morning. It's good to be here, guys. All right, first things first. Why did you decide to create this series? Well, first and foremost, you know, I'm a Nightbeat reporter, so I know with that particular segment or section, um, doing lighthearted, fun features, you know, we might, might not be able to squeeze them in there. So I went to our news director, Bernice, and told her that, hey, I'm, I want to figure out how we can tell these good stories for our community to show the good within us. So uh, after doing that, I told her, I think everybody has a story and we should we should highlight that just to give the voice of who we are in South Texas and they have been very moving and this month he introduced us to a local man with a passion for aircraft now tell us a little bit about him yes that guy he was super duper awesome Bernard uh, Williams I actually ran into him it was a stumble because we were actually looking for another story and he had his garage kind of lifted up and all we saw were airplanes and and air like wings and all that stuff and I was like okay this guy has a story and we got to talking and uh, he's a hobbyist. He loves the uh, fly his aircraft. And I thought that that was something cool. You know, even if it was as simple as possible, something fun to highlight that this is something he does in his community. So uh, yeah, we he actually put the goggles on me and let me see what he saw as he went in the air and I almost fell out of the chair. It got so dizzy, but it was just a fun, fun experience. That one of his uh, remote control planes, yeah, in this story was probably bigger than my first car, Japanese. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you also highlighted a woman who's dedicated her life to sewing clothes for little toddlers. What's the story there? Yes, Kathleen Gamble. Now, I met her because she kind of threw it up her, her little company called uh, Too Cute to Sleep In. And after speaking with her, I was like, okay, you know, we with What's Up South Texas, we look deep inside the person. You know, what they do is pretty talented, it's cool, but we want to know who they are. And I learned that she actually had a severe insecurity that, you know, struggled, made her struggle to get to the point where she could sew uh, clothes. And that was what one of her teachers told her when she was a little five-year-old girl. She was told that she was mentally challenged and that she would never amount to anything in life. She was the worst case that this woman had seen. So those words, you know, that's a, just a clear indication of how a simple statement can really dictate how a small child can take and carry on throughout their lives. So that challenged her throughout her school. She was shy. She was bullied. But eventually, with the help of her loved ones, her grandfather and her best friend, uh, Julia, who was blind and unfortunately passed away to breast cancer. They inspired her to stay strong, stay fearless, and do what she can to help and serve others in the community who may have worse situations than we could ever imagine. You know, talking about overcoming challenges, I remember this nice feature you did about the blind man who's still helping his oh, neighbors, yeah. <laughs> uh, not letting that disability stop him. Tell us about that. Yes, Roland Gomez, that's my man now. We, we met up with him, you know, like I said, if you saw him just every single day, he is cutting the yard, he's working on somebody's project, and you would not think that he was blind. So sitting down talking with him, you know, I asked him the question, I was like, so what happened? And he told me it was actually a drive-by shooting. Uh, he was out getting his mail and unfortunately, and this is like, you know, in the in the 90s, uh, out getting his mail and he said that he heard a truck coming down the road with this, this shotgun blast and he didn't think anything of it, said six feet standing away from a barrel, a guy jumped out of the bed of his truck and shot and sh uh, shot out his eye sockets. So, you know, the fact that, you know, that was so traumatizing, but yet he said that it was a blessing in disguise because it changed his life and it changed the lives of the troubled youth in his neighborhood at that time. They saw that and now they're all fathers, they're all on a great career path, and that was something that he looks at as a, a blessing. Jaffe, we're almost out of time. What stories are you working on for next month? Next month, we're doing something, a lot of collection of stories, so we still need your ideas, but I will tell you that we're working on a guy named Anthony Edwards. He has his own personal, beautiful African-American art museum inside of his home, so that's going to be a very special project to bring to you. Thank you so much, Jaffney Gray. We look forward to those stories and more. Yeah, more here on KSAT, KSAT.com and the KSAT TV app. Jaffney, great seeing you, and we appreciate your good stories on What's Up South Texas. Thank you so much. Let's go outside with live cam. We have more good news. If you got tired of the cold and the clouds, we're starting to see a slow change out there. Yes. We like the sun. Sun will be out this afternoon. Temperatures will warm up. It's, it's cold, obviously, still right now. If you're outside, if you're going to be outside, the jacket weather for sure. The wind chills are still in the 30s. 42 degrees here in San Antonio right now. Most places still in the 40s. There are some 30s up there in the Hill Country. 37 Kerrville, 34 Las Maples. But low to mid 40s here around Bear County. Wind chill values 35. That's what it feels like here in town. You'll find wind chills in the 20s.
in the Hill Country, but there is improvement on the way. You see that clearing line, Hondo, Bandera up to Kerrville. That is uh, the edge of the clouds. And once that moves through, we'll see the sun pop out and temperatures really start to crank up here. And by crank up, I mean mid 60s, but that's better than where we were yesterday. And northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. We did get a little bit of rainfall overnight. We're going to investigate some of those rainfall totals coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with Trans Guy, looking at 410 in Cherry Ridge. I know earlier there was a, a vehicle, actually it was an 18-wheeler on overpass, and now it looks like we have some kind of situation, maybe an accident there off to the side of the road. That's 410 at Cherry Ridge. For the past 13 years, 96.1 now radio host Russell Rush has been traveling across the state and visiting some of the most haunted places. So he recently spoke with our Erica Hernandez about his adventures and his personal encounters with the spirit world that can't be explained. You messing with me? Why? Stop. What started as a joke 13 years ago has turned Russell Rush into a believer. Go out, kind of poke fun at them and see what happens. And when we got out there, they were like, I think I just heard something say Russell's name. And I was like, but hold on, lights on, like this is real? And you know, from that moment on, I was hooked. That is when the Russell Rush haunted tour began. And since then, he and his team every year visit possible haunted locations. From whispers, footsteps, and ghostly figures, they have seen it all. The scariest, though, for Russell is being physically attacked. The ghost town of Helena, Texas, you know, things started happening there, and, and I was attacked in what felt like someone stabbing me in the back. At the jail in uh, Hallettsville, the old Lavaca County Jail, uh, someone tried pushing me to the ground and, and, and forcing me down. Um, and then I lost about an hour of time that I don't remember. I mean, you know, those are not natural things. Despite all that, Russell keeps bringing back his haunted tour and stepping inside new places. This year, because of the pandemic, they are bringing back some of the favorite episodes, including a lost episode that was never released. There's an episode that we shot about a decade ago at Hotwell's Hotel on the South Side. And something happened to the video when we uploaded it to, uh, to YouTube and our other distribution sources that it just completely vanished. And we couldn't even get the masters to work. All of a sudden during the pandemic, we pulled the video up and there it was. Season 13 is out now. Just visit RussellRushHauntedTour.com or you can see all the episodes that are up now on our KSAT streaming app. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Hmm, we shall reserve judgment until we investigate further. <laughs> I, I would be too scared. I want to see more, especially the ones where he felt like he was attacked. Yeah. That's, that's where it's that's really scary creepy. just hearing about it. That's not even a Halloween thing. That's just downright creepy. 939, <laughs> 42 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. So let's go and head over to our Katie Blake live with a preview of what's coming up next. Hey, Hel hi, Katie Blake. Hello, good morning. Yes, Halloween is almost here. And, you know, there's staples at Halloween parties fog machines. People put them in their, their punch bowls, you know, on the front porch. It kind of just adds a creepy feel, but you don't need some big, expensive, fancy contraption. We're going to show you how to make your own fog machine for Halloween coming up in a few days. Uh, that'll be coming up on Katie Science Lab. That's next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 943 <laughs> Halloween is this Saturday and for the last of Katie Science Lab of the spooky season, Katie Blake has yet another fun Halloween experiment. So she joins us live now in the studio to show us how to make a fog machine. But Good morning. first things first, check out the earrings. Yeah. Let's dim the lights. Yay. Ooh. There are, yes, courtesy of ah. HEB, thanks HEB. There are several modes you can change the lights, but I can't do it now that I got my gloves on, but right. yeah. Those are cool, and you said they were only I like, forgot what? to pick you up a pair, David. Sorry. And they probably have some left. Yeah. I'll get you I some. I love them. Would you warn them, David? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll that's warn them trick-or-treating, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. All right. Really excited about this one. So, yeah, you don't need to go buy a electronic fog machine. You can do it yourself at home. Involve the kids. This is going to be fun. Here is what you are going to need. You're going to need some warm water. You're going to need dry ice because we are working with the dry ice we need adults supervision for this and well, everyone here, right? and everyone needs to have proper gloves on um, we'll talk a little bit more about that some dish soap some shoelaces and a large container so we have all of that right here i've got my dry ice in the cooler bag 
If you're going to do this, make sure you go get the dry ice on the day of because it will only hold for a few hours before it's before it doesn't become usable anymore. So we've got the dry ice here. And again, the thing with dry ice, so technically it's not ice. So we know ice as frozen water, right? Well, this is frozen carbon dioxide. You can even feel it. It's very, very cold. So you cannot touch this with your bare hands. You could really, really hurt yourself. You could even maybe get frostbite. So David, yeah. I'm gonna give you that bag. I got two bags there. at the store this morning. Yeah, so you're gonna take it out and you're gonna put it in the warm water. Ooh. We'll see what starts to happen. There we go. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I hope they can get the sound effects too, because that's when you really start to hear the. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh. Good. Like a like a witch's cauldron <laughs> brewing over there. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna put a. Gonna put do you have a little chunk? There? Put the little chunk in the little bowl. And maybe it will come over the top more. Yeah, Look there we go, there that. we go, there we go. So I'm gonna put my block in here. We should have brought a stir. We could have made some. Did you feel how cold that is? It, even with the, even with, you really gotta make sure that you have good hand protection with this because if you touch it with your bare skin, it could really, really hurt you. So, so what's happening here? So our dry ice, our frozen carbon dioxide is going through a process called sublimation. And that is when an object goes from a, a frozen state, a solid state, to a gaseous state. So we've got carbon dioxide gas here. Normally, if we have an ice cube or something like that, frozen water, it melts. So it just goes from solid to liquid. This is going from solid to gas, which is really cool. You don't see that every day. And yes, yeah, so this is how you can make your own Halloween fog machine. Spooky, spooky, spooky. So. This is just a lot of fun. Sublimation. So, sublimation happening right in front of your eyes. And it's safe It's safe to touch. I would still keep the gloves on if the, mm -hmm. the kiddos want to touch it because it's very, very cold. Um, all right, so let's try. We have another little aspect to this experiment that we're going to try. So remember we said we needed shoelaces yeah, and dish that. soap. So we've soaked our shoelaces in dish soap here. What we're going to do is pull out the shoelace and we're gonna kind of rinse it off a little bit. So it's been in some dish soap and a little bit of water. Once again, more adult supervision. Yes, Glad definitely for this whole thing. So if you have a little bit of the dish water on your hands, go around the perimeter of your container like this. Wait, you're gonna have to stick your hand in the jar. My hand's too big. Your hand's too big. <laughs> you may need the, the little hands for this. This is safe for the kiddos to do. Um, so when I, when I said don't, don't put your hand all the way in there, but it is, it's safe to do it like this, but don't let the kiddos stick their hands all the way in. So you're gonna take some of the dish water and put it around the perimeter of your container here. Mm -hmm. and then you're gonna take your shoelace. You may need to wring it out just a little bit. So what we're gonna try to do is make a bubble on top of this gas and trap the gas and see what happens. And I did test this out. It was kind of hit or miss. So you wanna lay the shoelace flat on one end and then bring it across. I David, yours might be working. There's something happening. I don't think mine, mine didn't work. So. There's sublimation. <laughs> the sublimation <laughs> is still happening. David, yours might be. What I do? Yours kind of worked a little bit. So this might not work, but if you can, if you have a lot of time at home to try this, mm -hmm. you can make a, a bubble on top of the gas and it will kind of bubble up and then eventually it'll pop. Maybe it'll work on the baby. I'll try this real quick. Okay. Oh yeah, see it's working on the baby guy. Oh, it's creating and a then bubble it, down inside the bowl? Yeah, and then it yeah. pops Pop. and then all of the, the gas will come out and it's a cool visual thing. So where do, you, where do you get dry ice around here? I got it at HEB this morning. Okay. Yeah, so oh, okay. a lot of the stores, there's a container right at the front by the checkouts and you can just ask them to help you put it in a, okay. bring a cooler or something, but they'll help you out. Okay, yeah. okay. don't <laughs> touch, you'll burn your hands. Yes, yes. Okay, all right, perfect. <laughs> do more of that, surface. David. <laughs> just, kinda, just get it going. More cool. spooky experiments and things to do on KSAT Kids on KSAT. Happy Halloween, guys. Yes, yeah. happy Halloween. Thank you so much. That's My super hands are all cool. Now, though. <laughs> yes, they are. I'm going to keep trying this. All right. Let us know how the bubble goes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to take video.
my little one's going to be like, I want to do that now. But good I to know. know, at least uh, right at HEV. So yeah, that's good. Too bad. Good to know. Justin's back now with look how much of a warm up later on today, Justin. That's awesome, by the way. I love sublimation and the sounds. It sounds like there's a hot tub going on over there. Okay, <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's talk about rainfall. We did get a little bit of rainfall overnight. This is actually over the last 72, 72 hours. We're going to go all the way back to Sunday. How much rain have we received over the last three days or so? And it just hasn't been much. Uh, we're talking about a quarter of an inch, Kerrville, uh, the airport about two tenths, Gonzales about a tenth, Howitz fell close to three tenths, but this is not enough. We need a lot more than that to cut into our drought that we're in. It was all pretty light, just again, didn't amount to uh, too much here around South Texas. And looking forward, there's not a whole lot of chances for rain. Uh, so um, we're going to need another pattern change down the line at some point. Here's a look at the time lapse. Skies cooled out briefly there for a second. Uh, clouds have filled back in for now, and I'll show you the satellite picture here in just a second. Sun's going to be back out, I promise. 42 degrees. Northwest Julia winds at about 13 miles per hour. Dew point right now is at 35, so that's on the dry side. The air is dry across all of South Texas. There is the clearing line uh, right at about Hondo, Bandera, Curvo, Fredericksburg. There is a little bit of low cloudiness there behind it, too, but that shouldn't affect San Antonio. So this line will push through. I give it another hour or so. And then we'll go full sun this afternoon. As we look across the state of Texas, some snow on the back side of this. So you still got some snow flying anywhere from Amarillo uh, up towards Dalhart and far west Texas there. And then parts of New Mexico and quite a bit of rain stretching from Oklahoma City, Dallas, and then down towards the Houston area. As this upper low pushes off to the east, it's still cold across a large portion of the state. 33 Abilene, 32 Lubbock. 42 again here in San Antonio. A little warmer down in Houston, 52 degrees there. And locally, most spots in the 40s. We have some 30s still for Fredericksburg, Rock Springs, and Kerrville. Uh, winds have been very gusty. They were strong overnight. Now gusting to about 20 miles per hour here in San Antonio, gusting to 23 in Kerrville, and gusting to 25 in Uvalde. So that means there's a wind chill. Uh, feels like it's in the 30s. For most of us, there are still some wind chills too in the 20s. Uh, up in the hill country. So it's it's still sort of winter like outside at least feels that way in the wind gust forecast. It'll be gusty through today. It'll die down a little bit tonight and then pick right back up again tomorrow. So Thursday will be breezy too. We could see some gusts up around 25 30 miles per hour tomorrow. Forecast for today we will go 53 noontime. Clouds will get out of here 61 2 o'clock. We're up around 65 later today and uh, very quickly we'll check in on Zeta winds right now 90 miles per hour. It's just expected to be a potentially a get close to a cat two hurricane. The latest update though brings it in as a cat one around six o'clock and then eventually moving out to the north and east and getting out of here. There still could be a significant storm surge though around New Orleans and eastern parts of Louisiana. Forecast for us clearing today 68 tomorrow and breezy 70 on Friday. Great weather this weekend for Halloween 74. Don't forget to fall back Saturday night into Sunday morning. We'll be right back. Welcome back. San Antonio family is winning the internet right now with their Halloween costumes for this year. Can you guess? It's Tiger King. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cute. This is Tom and Tessie Weaver dressed up like uh, Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin, but they have a supporting cast too, and that's the backstory. Yes. Yeah, so with five children, it's not like it says, and not, not like the Weavers have a lot of time to spare, but they managed to put together some very adorable Tiger King costumes with Grace 12 as Joe Exotic, Ellie 6 as Baskin, and three-month-old triplets as the tigers that Joe and Baskin That's fight incredible. over. What's funny is they didn't expect triplets, and boom, they've got little baby tigers <laughs> everywhere. Very cute. Have a great day, guys.